this is a butane and carbon number 2 I have a methyl group if I do monochlorination of this compound that is Cl2 in the presence of UV light how many possible products are there now you see uh, it will be easy if I write this kind of formula CH3 CCH3 CH2 CH3 if you see uh, there are basically three kind of four kind of hydrogen possible you can replace either this hydrogen either this hydrogen or this hydrogen or among these two any one of the hydrogen because these two CH3 have equivalent environment so we have basically four sites available so four sites available now let us replace each hydrogen and see what happens CH3 C CH3 H CH2 CH2 Cl now if I replace this hydrogen what will happen CH3 C CH3 hydrogen and then I will have CH CH3 Cl now this compound is not a chiral compound I need only chiral compounds so this is not a chiral compound what about this this is a chiral compound this is a CH3 so if you see this carbon this is a chiral compound so this is a basically this carbon is a chiral carbon corresponding compound is chiral compound now if I replace from here what will happen if I replace from here I will have CH3 CCH3 and then I will have Cl CH2 CH3 again this carbon is not a chiral carbon corresponding compound is not a chiral compound I don't have any carbon that is chiral now the last one if I replace a hydrogen from here so what I will have CH2 Cl and then I will have C CH3 hydrogen and this side I will have CH2 CH3 so you see this time this carbon is a chiral carbon because this side hydrogen CH3 CH2 Cl and this are ethyl group so for different groups are attached so now this compound is a chiral compound so basically we will have this plus its enantiomer to compound here I will get and this plus its enantiomer so I will get two compound here so total four chiral compounds are possible so in this case I can say total four chiral compounds are possible four chiral compounds and that is basically option number 2 so in this case option 2 is the right answer now let us discuss the next problem so question says the increasing order of ionic radii of given isoelectronic spaces are so what is isoelectronic spaces a spaces in which number of electrons are same so what is isoelectronic that is number of electron is same now let us first find how many electron s2 minus have so s2 minus if you see I have basically given you the periodic table now this is atomic number in this case is 2 this is 8 this is 18 are you getting or not so you see argon has atomic number 18 so sulfur must have atomic number of 16 so sulfur 2 minus basically it will have 18 electron now I have Cl minus Cl is here so Cl will also have 17 electron atomic number is 17 but it's a minus charge so this will have again 18 electron let us say Ca2 plus Ca2 plus so is here so atomic number is 18 90 20 but I have 2 plus so it's again will have 18 electron now K plus K plus is here potassium is 19 but if I remove one electron it will have 
18 electrons. So I can say S2 minus Cl minus Ca2 plus and K plus all will have same number of electron. Now if you see if you have same number of electron and if you have a positive charge this means the nucleus will attract electrons more so size will be a smaller in this case if you have more negative charge less proton this means electron in the outermost cell is less attracted so size will be bigger so what I have, I have a rule in case of isoelectronic spaces, anion will be bigger but the cation will be shorter. So anion that is more negative charge, more the negative charge, more the negative, bigger the size. And similarly, with case of cation, I can say more the positive charge, a smaller is the size. And this is very obvious if you have more positive charge, this means this is only possible if you have more proton here so it will attract the outer electron more so it will be uh, basically shrink if you have more electron that is less proton so it will not attract so strongly so size will be bigger are you getting or not so in this case size will be slightly bigger so now things are very easy S2- minus has most negative charge S2- minus the biggest in size then Cl- minus s2 minus then cl minus and then you have k plus and then you have ca2 plus ca2 plus has two positive charge so a smallest in size you see here which option is the correct option so increasing order so smallest size ca2 plus then k plus cl minus so option 2 is the right answer in this case so option 2 So option 2 is the right answer. Now this question is from Van der Waal gas equation. Every year you will find a question comes from Van der Waal gases equation and this is the only important part in case of gas law. If you remember the Van der Waal equation is P plus A N square by V square V minus N B this is equals to nRT and this equation is called Van der Waal equation and this is valid for real gases so this is valid for real gas I have to have only one S so this is valid for real gas now compressibility factor of a real gas at high pressure is so we have to find the compressibility factor is Z so at high pressure what will be the compressibility factor we have to define you see height high pressure I can neglect this term a plus n square by v square because if p is very high we can neglect this term so p is much much greater than a n square by v square so I can neglect this term so now this equation is p b minus n b is equals to n r t we can also write this equation for one mole of gas then we can write P B minus B is equals to RT and from here let me see I have to have a uh, equation in terms of P B R T P B R T so let me see I can write P B minus B P is equals to RT if I divide by RT so I will have P B by RT T minus BP by RT is equals to 1 now again further we can write 
so PV by RT is equals to 1 plus BP by RT now the term PV by RT is called Z compressibility factor what is compressibility factor compressibility factor is V this is V RDL uh, this is V RDL divided by V real now this is V real by V RDL basically so I can write here V real V real divided by V RDL and this is defined as compressibility factor and V RDL if I apply PV is equals to NRT for one mole of gas we can write PV is equals to RT so from here I can find V RDL that is equals to RT by P and if I plug this value RT by P into this equation we will get the compressibility factor Z this is equals to V real and this divided by RT by P so if this P goes up so we will have P V real divided by RT so we define this as a Z so what is Z? Z is basically P V real by RT now in this equation we can say this is basically P V by RT this is a compressibility factor and this is equals to 1 plus PP by RT so 1 plus BP by RT this is the option number 2 so option 2 is basically correct in this case now this is from coordination compound question says which among the following will be named as dibromo dibrom ido bis ethylene diamine chromium 3 bromide so this is ethylene diamine so we have to first look that this molecule in is called ethylene diamine now we have bis also this means I have to look for this compound in 2 and this is possible if you see in whole only in one case option 1 this is given so one can say option one is the right answer so option one basically we can try to write name of this compound also so let us say chromium in twice and then we have br and then we have br here also so we bromine will be minus so this box will be plus so we can find what is the oxidation number of chromium chromium is X and this is a neutral ligand so zero charge bromine 2 minus and this is equals to plus 1 so finally I will have X is equals to 3 so now I can say chromium basically exists in oxidation state plus 3 now this is cationic part so this part of coordination sphere is cation and this part is a nion so first we have to write cation and now first we have to write ligand so we have dibromo one ligand and I have bis uh, bis ethylene diamine so we have two ligand and we come first before ethylene E so we have to first write dibromo so first is dibromo so this is first ligand that is dibromo and then we have basically for bromine we have to write bromide that is bromido so this is bromido so bromido so this is bromido also so let me write here so this is coming from bromide so this is bromido dibromido and our base ethylene diamine so this is ethylene diamine ethylene diamine and this is chromium 3 chromium 3 
and then we have to write this is a bromine so this is bromide so this is the full name for the given compound now this problem is reduction of CO to CH2 so this is from if I have C double bond O and this can be converted into CH2 molecule so basically CO can be converted into CH2 now question says in the given transformation the following is the most appropriate reason now this transformation can be done by two ways that is an H2 and H2OH minus so one can use and H2 and H2OH minus that is hydrazine and this is called wolf kissner reduction and this can also be done by ZNHGHCl and this is called Clemenson reduction so there are two ways one important part we have in this problem so I have this molecule here I have OH and then I have C double bond so let me see here and then I have C double bond O and CS3 now we have to convert this CO group everything I have to remain as it is so I have to replace I have to replace CO with CH2 but OH will remain as it is so I will have double bond O and then I will have CS3 but now this CO will be converted into CH2 so there is no CA now this is basically converted into CH2 you see here this CO is converted into CH2 now both reagent can be used either ZNHGSCL or NH2 NH2OH minus but this disadvantage of this reagent is HCL can react with the side chain H2O and it can do dehydration H2O plus can lose so what we will do in this case we will use this reagent NH2 NH2 that is the basic reagent so we have either basic or acidic since the side chain side chain will be affected by will be affected will be affected by acidic reagent and that's why we have to use basic reagent so this is NH2 NH2 minus this is answer is 4 so in this case option 4 is the right answer